Hello and thanks for coming in and welcome to the Adroid Technologies webinar series. Today I'll be showing the GOC35 um, hardware unit, which is basically a PLC and HMI solution. Um, this presentation will consist out of two parts. Uh, part one will be the set of functions and features and how to get started with the product. And part two will be a demo. Um, which will show the user how to uh, achieve some of the requirements. Um, this video will be um, uploaded onto the U channel and will be available for download after the presentation. Uh, once the presentation starts, the live chat will be disabled. And if you've got any questions, um, you are free to email it to us and we will get to it uh, progressively as we receive them. Okay. So part one of the um, presentation, as mentioned, is a short summary of the uh, product functions and features. In short, um, this unit um, has two functions, which is um, combined into a one unit, a single unit. Okay. It's got a PLC function used for uh, basic and standard uh, PLC um, programming. It's also got a HMI function which consists out of an LCD display and um, embedded illuminated keys. I want to point out that this LCD display is not a touchscreen. Um, and if such a functionality is needed, then a proper guard needs to be applied. So basically this unit is ideal and catered for um, small automation requirements, such as standalone machines, simple and small processes, and um, uh, equipment like that. It's not intended to replace a IQF and got simple um, combination, um, especially when it comes to advanced functionality. However, if the system applicable um, does not require um, advanced functionality, then this un unit is ideal for such applications. Um, as for the communication protocols for this unit, uh, there's uh, two main streams, um, the Ethernet standard and the serial communication standard. Uh, the Ethernet standard um, accommodates two communication protocols of uh, industrial standard, mainly Modbus TCP and uh, CC-Link IE Field Basic, uh, which is of course the Mitsubishi proprietary um, communication uh, protocol. For the serial communication standard, uh, RS-232 and RS-485 is being accommodated. Now, the GOC consists out of three parts. Uh, the main unit, uh, as mentioned, consists out of the PLC and HMI. Um, in addition, um, IO extension units can be added um, on top of this uh, PLC function of this uh, GOC uh, to expand the IO functionality of this device. Uh, these can be a digital discrete IOs, uh, analog continuous IOs, and also high speed inputs. Okay. They are optional. And then the third um, <clears throat> part will be the communication extension units uh, or add ons. So these can be um, Ethernet or serial, as mentioned, and um, at least one of them is required to uh, program this uh, device, uh, GOC. Um, the Ethernet communication port, of course, is the recommended of the four or three. Once the Ethernet communication uh, card is added to the HMI, um, you can use the built-in configuration tool, uh, which is called the system menu, um, uh, to configure the Ethernet communication ports. It is run via the uh, firmware, hardware firmware, and um, uh, <clears throat> it's used to set up multiple of hardware um, properties. In this particular case, we will only be interested in the um, Ethernet communication properties, like the IP address and something else, legal gateway, uh, for the um, scope of this presentation. As can be seen, um, the um, GOC can accommodate uh, two communication cards um, to be connected to a, a PC or another device. 
uh, in this case uh, through a laptop for programming purposes ethernet and the serial communication port note that if you opt for a rs232 serial communication port uh, you will need an additional serial to usb converter to um, <clears throat> accommodate the programming um, process if your pc does not have a rs232 communication port as such the ethernet port is once again the recommended option here's an example of the uh, ethernet communication uh, uh, card which is applied to the goc um, in this case for programming purposes and uh, as you can see the communication slot on top here is still available and open for a serial communication card to be added we won't, we won't need this at this stage so once you apply this uh, ethernet communication card you will need to um, access its settings um, via the system menu so to do that you have to press the long uh, the, the, the left arrow key give it a long press after a couple of seconds three to five seconds the system menu will open and will allow you to um, navigate towards the IP setup uh, it's here where you can set the IP address such as the mask and the people gateway from there you are ready to go and um, um, we've, we'll, next step we will connect to the uh, programming software or the engineering software um, for uh, programming purposes so <clears throat> this uh, device uh, uses the GOC toolkit uh, which is part of the codices programming platform uh, it is uh, an IEC uh, supported platform and um, accommodate all the IEC PLC programming names such as structured text instruction lists uh, function block diagrams ladder diagrams and so on it is an integrated tool um, since you are able to configure both your HMI program and your PLC program via this uh, tool. So it is um, a very handy and portable tool and it's free for download, um, which can be accessed via our website. Links will be provided and also um, it will be available on the B2BC um, knowledge base on the other website so if we look at the geo chmi um, function of this uh, uh, unit uh, we will see that um, the hmi part can be found on the front side of the goc whilst the plc part will be found at the back of the goc okay. um, so if you look at the hmi part it's got an lcd screen and it's got the uh, 10 key, keypad uh, navigation and data entry set of keys which are programmable but it's not recommended to program them um, also it's got eight illuminated keys uh, which can both um, accommodate user interaction as well as um, provide um, status indication via leds um, which utilizes free colors as well as blinking speeds to uh, provide different messages to the end user as mentioned the 10 key keypad uh, can be used for navigation like um, home back up down next and enter as well as it can be used for numeric and alphabet in other words alphanumeric uh, data entry onto the LCD screen the right hand side of the GOC uh, shows the eight um, illuminated keys okay these can be uh, programmed with different uh, led control uh, outputs uh, via a control byte okay which of course will uh, provide you a combination of blinking and colors um, there's about 10 options for that 10 variations that can be used here we've got another view of the uh, functions of the uh, HMI of the GOC. Um, I want to point out um, that on the top left corner you can see two indication LEDs. So you have the power LED and the run LED. These will provide the status of your PLC and HMI on the GOC. 
So um, in other words, if there's no power, obviously you will see it via this indication underneath. But if there's power and the PLC is not running, you'll also be able to see that. So obviously both those indication IDs needs to be activated for a healthy GOC. So um, more information about this um, HMI uh, uh, component of the GSC is that it can ac accommodate up to 64 screens. Okay? So these screens can be used in combination of various um, requirements uh, of the process, uh, like you can uh, monitor um, certain equipment, uh, law messages, um, machine status, uh, uh, also process status. It can also allow the user to set application data. Okay, all of these can be configured via the HMI configuration tool, which is a um, part of the Codacy software. Uh, we will be looking at that um, in detail in part two. Okay, so some of the functions that you can um, apply to the GSC HMI is um, you know, uh, timers, counters, you can monitor temperatures, you can control uh, machine speed, um, you can use it for production purposes, uh, running hours of machines for maintenance purposes, and um, also uh, for alarming and data logging. It must be pointed out that the GOC uh, HMI accommodates predefined graphic elements only. Okay. Um, with a, a, a single color. For more advanced graphic requirements like PGA uh, uh, <clears throat> colors or um, uh, user-defined graphics, a got simple is recommended. Okay, so for this uh, GOC PLC function, as can be seen, um, you you can um, utilize various of uh, programming languages. As stated earlier, IEC programming languages. Um, so the most common ones in the process and factory automation industry would be your ladder diagrams and your function block diagrams, which will be included in the scope of this presentation. Um, however, um, since these are IEC uh, pr programming languages, you can use them um, in a, in a, in a a mixed way, um, they are intercompatible, um, and uh, we will have an example of that where we will use uh, function blocks in data diagrams. If you look at the programming environment, um, this is just a short summary. Uh, at the top, yeah, we've got the uh, variable declaration field. Okay. So here we will add all of the variables which will be used in the PLC program. Okay, like uh, <clears throat> tags and also the data types will be listed here. We, we have um, elaborated on this um, for, uh, later on in, in part two and uh, it will make sense at that stage. Below that, we will have a programming area. Okay, so these are uh, programming sections. Uh, de depending on the programming language which you use, um, you will have networks or it would be uh, one field in this case it's networks because we are using ladder diagrams okay. below that um, we have the software output display okay. so this will be your status of your um, programming process or, or your controller as well as the um, condition of your program written in the sense of errors and warnings um, obviously it's a prerequisite So, uh, one of the strengths of this uh, Codices uh, toolkit, GOC toolkit, is that you use one platform to uh, um, configure all of the hardware components, uh, which will be your uh, uh, PLC configuration, PLC programming, HMI configuration, HMI programming, and as well as the inter integration of these two uh, functions with each other. As you can see, the different areas where this will be done, um, the PLC programming area will be done in this tab here, which is the one that's open. HMI configuration will be done in this tab here. And um, the hardware configurations can be found here. Yeah. Right. 
If you look at the back of the GOC in the configuration toolkit, you will see that um, there are many slots uh, that can be used to uh, configure your hardware to your process requirements. So on, if you look at this area here and this area here, you can add um, option adapters. So these can be your digital discrete I.O., analog uh, continuous I.O., as well as high-speed counters, uh, which can be added in there. These two slots here, as mentioned, are uh, used for your communication um, modules, okay, Ethernet and serial. Below that, you will see a table of uh, um, this digital discrete I.O. Um, this is where you actually um, declare each one of your uh, digital inputs and digital outputs and giving it a name as well as uh, access its address uh, which can be used in the PLC program okay. so here is a complete um, GOC unit where all of the fields are utilized with um, option adapters and cards so as you can see here you have got a, a four channel analog uh, input Four channel and output card, RS-422 communication card, RS-232 communication card, and then of course you also have the building I.O., which is discrete I.O., uh, which is your uh, inputs on the top here, and outputs at the bottom here. So your outputs, you can have two types, a relay and transistor. Your inputs also accommodate two configurations, uh, sync and source. In addition, you have your uh, powering socket here. This particular unit powers a 24 volt DC. And on your uh, right hand side, you can see there's a slot for your SD card, which is used for logging or data storage purposes or uh, memory value storage purposes. Okay. So when you open codices and you start uh, compiling your program, you will find that there are various of functions. Um, the functions that we will be interested in will be pointed out in the next few slides um, as these are the minimum requirements to get your uh, GOC program. Uh, in this particular case we see that uh, you need to uh, build your program prior to program your uh, GOC. It's uh, basically a program compile and uh, your GSC will not be allowed to be programmed if there's any error in your code. That is uh, one of the prerequisites. Okay. Here we see more functions that we'll use in this um, scope of uh, presentation. First of all, on the top, you've got your login and logout. That's basically connecting to your GSC and disconnecting from your GSC okay, for monitoring purposes and programming purposes. And below that, uh, we've got your run and stop. That's basically your PLC uh, stop and run mode. That can be set there. Um, if the PLC is in run mode, then you can test and simulate your program. If it's stopped, then nothing will happen. Below that, we've got your write values. So whenever you force a data entry or a set a bit, the GOC will not accept that change until you write the values to your GOC. Below that is your simulation mode, which is handy if you want to test a program or um, test the engineering software, uh, in this case, uh, this, or test the functionality that you can um, use with this uh, product prior to purchasing it, as you don't need any hardware for simulation mode. This will be purely software. Okay, so now. We are going to um, discuss part two, which is the um, demo. Okay. Um, so here is an example of a pre-programmed um, uh, uh, GOC. The program it's on a pre-programmed GOC. Okay. A small program which we've written just to um, point out some of the functions which can be used in the plant. As mentioned, the top part will be your um, variable declaration field. Um, you will see all your uh, tags as well as your data types okay. um, being um, pointed out there in detail. On the left here is your program files. 
which will be programmed onto your GRC. This particular one is a ladder, as you can see from that symbol there. Um, you don't need to write all your program files in the same language. You can mix them up. Remember, these are IEC uh, program languages. So you can write various of programs and sections um, below this unit here. You can just add new uh, program files. Uh, since this application, which we are demonstrating, is a small one, we'll only have one program file. So here, the programming field, you can see ladder diagrams are being used. Um, the, the classical, uh, normally open, normally closed uh, um, um, gates, as well as your um, coils. Um, so you have your normally open, normally closed contacts and your coils. Um, note also that you add function in between. You can use that, like the timers, your counters, um, you use scaling blocks. Use um, comparison blocks. Uh, you can use um, a wide range of um, predefined function blocks for your uh, process. Below your project system messages. Um, so yeah, it tells you to the um, status of your hardware as well as the um, condition of your program. Um, recall that uh, the program needs to have zero errors prior to compiling. A prior to programming the GOC. Right. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, since this uh, HMI is combined with a PLC, you can obviously add um, IO hardware to your uh, unit. In this case, we will have a simple stop and start circuit uh, as your digital discrete inputs to um, um, demonstrate some of the functions inside of this uh, GOC unit. Um, also, the illuminated uh, keys, the eight keys here, the 2x4 matrix uh, keys on the right hand side of GRC, which is part of your HMI. Um, <clears throat> Note that your input status is the stop start, also the digital output status, which is your running. Okay. On the left hand side, um, you, we also have the raw analog values as well as, as scaled analog values. So, in other words, uh, what we are trying to um, point out here is that the GOC can um, accommodate advanced uh, analog uh, value um, uh, calculations, <clears throat> manipulation, like a scaling, in comparison, mathematical functions, etc. Okay, so the next. Uh, Thing to be looking at will be the video. So just uh, show uh, what we achieved here. So here um, we are demonstrating the navigation functionality of these uh, keys. Okay. You can see the pump is stopped. And this, the buttons are off. Some basic uh, symbols that can be added to this uh, GOC unit. So, um, if we activate the physical start switch, uh, the pump will, uh, in this simulation, activate and start filling the tank with uh, <coughs> liquid. So, here, uh, this value is not a percentage value, it's a liter value. So, uh, this is, uh, we use this configuration to demonstrate the tank level conditions. So, here we see the tank level is healthy, green light. As soon as a certain level is reached, um, like 50% of the tank, then the yellow blinking light will activate. Yeah. And as soon as uh, the levels are at the undesirable level, um, like overflowing um, in this case, the red indication LED will blink. As you can see in the case here. So we stopped at the pump now. This can be done aut uh, automatically, obviously, um, as part of the program. Uh, for the scope of this uh, demonstration, we uh, opted for the manual activation because we don't have a physical tank here. Okay, 
levels are healthy again and all the indication and the things are um, deactivated. to uh, show the uh, uh, monitoring of the PLC program via the SCOTUS's programming platform. As can be seen here, the variables in the variable fields are taken, as well as the function box, the values in the function box, you can see it's uh, dynamically taking what's happening currently. So next video, so this is a close up of the um, GOC uh, HMI screen output. Okay. Uh, program. So another advanced feature of this uh, of JC is the simple visualization. So simple visualization is basically a built-in SCADA feature in codices, which allow you to build a simple simplified SCADA in the platform just for monitoring and testing purposes. Um, the, the SCADA is very uh, basic, uh, it's not intended for industrial use at all, it's just for monitoring, troubleshooting, and uh, uh, confirming certain operations in your uh, PLC program. But it cannot be used for uh, plant uh, scale purposes, especially advanced plants, with large applications. As you can see, it's quite dynamic. So uh, this is um, basically the um, two parts of the presentation which we um, want to cover uh, in, in this uh, presentation. Um, <clears throat> some supplement information will be made available in our Android uh, uh, VC, uh, knowledge base as a knowledge base article. This usually includes um, procedure videos, uh, sample programs, um, compiled notes, um, all the uh, frequent asked questions can be found in the um, knowledge base. It's important to point out that this knowledge base is not static, it expands continuously as um, queries arise and um, uh, uh, attention is required in certain fields of the IT automation hardware. Okay, um, so uh, thank you very much for your time and I hope that you have learned something in, in, in this presentation. If you did, um, please uh, like and subscribe. I hope you didn't subscribe yet. And um, also um, uh, you can uh, click the bell for notifications um, for future um, videos being posted. Um, if you've got any questions, please uh, drop us a mail. You will see the mail in the previous slides at the bottom. Um, and we will uh, attend to it as they come in. Thank you very much.